Answer me this. In the last five years, has your golf improved? Yes or no? In the next 10 minutes, this could be the video that sets you free. A big warm welcome back to the channel today, guys. With the aid of some overhead footage, I'm gonna show you some of the most eye-opening movements on the club handle and club head and you as a golfer that might just change your views and thoughts on how this downswing works. This was inspired by many of my subscribers requesting if I can go into a little bit more detail into transition, how the handle works. And I've, I've referenced it a lot in many of my golf's, golf videos of how the handle needs to work towards the golf ball. Now, a lot of this downswing work and downswing change that golfers want to, to get involved with is because of the over the top motion that we see. So that the shoulder comes forwards, the handle comes forwards, the club head comes forwards, and we slice across the back of the golf ball. The path goes a long way left at 10 degrees. We hit down at eight degrees and the face is open 10 degrees. And these are the four boxes, as you'll know, as a, uh, if you're a regular subscriber to my channel, that the four boxes that you should only have up when you're working with TrackMan, as far as I'm concerned, for clarity of what the club and the ball are doing when they're interacting. So the over-the-top motion, which I, I've explained in many videos, is not the, the fix, but I'm gonna talk about downswing because that's where people go to to try to sort their slice out and I've been working with some wonderful clients big shout out to Brad Dennis Michael probably too many to name actually uh, but they're three guys that I've really uh, and 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 Bob White actually uh, that I've really started to enjoy uh, the changes that they've that they've made on Skillist if you want to check me out on there you can you can do so with the aid of the overhead camera, I'm able to show you some different views on how this club works. So a lot of the questions have been, when you're talking, Stuart, about moving the handle forwards, what are you actually meaning? Are you meaning moving it out to the ball line? Uh, am I talking about moving it off to the right? So as I go to the top of my backswing, I'm going to first talk about the traits and the trends that I've seen prevalent in so many of this online instruction, which is why I posed you the question at the start of this video. Because I believe, and when you see these videos from overhead, you will understand why you are not having any success with applying these faulty uh, changes. So the first one that we see as the negative downswing is the handle coming out, the club head coming out, and the club then working across the back of the golf ball, which delivers that shot. 12 degrees left, 10 down, 11 open. Then what a golfer is asked to do is make a backswing, and one of the advices is to move the handle down, keep their back to the target. Now you've got your back to the target and you've got the handle low and from the inside. And then the instruction is to hit from the inside and release the golf club on the way through. Unfortunately, I hit that so badly that Trapman didn't pick it up. And if you've experienced that fat shot and out to the right, well, I just experienced it with you from that utter rubbish change. So the arms working down, gonna swing the club from the inside. I just got that one nicely thin so I didn't hit it fat. And you can see that the attack angle is up. The path is from the inside at 14 degrees. And sure, I've got a nice draw. Well, if you can call it that, I've got absolutely no pressure on the golf ball. So then when you've worked on that for a long time, and I'm gonna give a shout out to Brad on this one. Brad worked on that for a long time. What you then end up seeing is you start to see a handle work down and what you then start to see is a club shaft stand up and get too steep. So then what the 
instruction is from, from the golf coach and from the, the, the YouTube channels out there is to get the club forwards and then really start to tuck the, the right elbow in. So as I move the handle in, I then tuck the right arm in and now I'm hitting from the inside. So as I go up to the top, I move the handle out and I tuck the right arm in and then from there, I can really, and you heard that, I can really start to get some beautiful shanks going, which is absolutely beautiful. So that motion with how the handle works really starts to make the club face open up. As you start to move the handle down, as you tuck your right elbow in, you can see how the face of the golf club really starts to look up to the sky which causes all sorts of issues. So those are the, uh, really the, the, the lion's share of the errors. When we're in both cases, when we're making these downswings, the first one, the handle moving down, we can see how much the handle is close to the body and the handle then has to move away from the body. So that's just dealing with the handle in isolation. So the instruction is to move down, and then swing out to the right. The next instruction is, let's not worry about the handle coming down so much, but we're gonna tuck the right elbow in. And as we tuck the right elbow in, we see this shaft shallowing out as we get to the golf ball. And as we do that, we can really see how the handle moves out. But pay particular notice of how that club face will really start to point up to the sky out to the right, and then the golfer has to really try to work the face over. Again, it, it, so little pressure on the golf ball. Now, we're gonna get onto the good stuff. So that's all the garbage, and if you've been working on that, sack your golf coach, sack the lessons, and go find someone else, because I promise you that will not make you better. I promise you that will not make you better. That is the band-aid fix. That is the band-aid fix for other errors in your golf swing. If you fix the symptoms, you will never get better. Again, why well, I posed you the question at the start of this video. So now we're gonna go back to the good stuff. So we're gonna go to the top, I'm gonna take it back, and now what I'm gonna get you to do is I'm gonna get you to move the handle forwards. Now, for those of you that talk about not using the right shoulder, the right shoulder should not move forwards. Again, utter garbage, because the right shoulder has to move forwards to move us around the golf ball. If I was pitching the plane up at waist high and I made a backswing and I pulled the golf club to aim to hit it at this plane, look how my right shoulder must come forwards to facilitate the handle moving out and back in. So therefore, why would I not want to use my shoulder when I'm angled down at the golf ball? Just in an effort to move it from the inside. So when we go up to the top of the backswing, I now move the handle forwards. Now I've got the handle forwards, and from the overhead you can see the handle's almost on the ball line. But now what's gonna happen is I'm gonna move the handle back down underneath us. And in the process of moving the handle back down in, uh, underneath us, can you see how the club face really starts to line itself back up? And that handle moving itself back down, and it uh, could hit it slightly out the heel, that's why it showed an open face. But look at the angle of attack and look at the club path. I've got angle of attack down, I've got a straight club path. So we're gonna move the handle forwards, then we're gonna move the handle back down. Now, this handle back down and pressure moving from toe to heel is gonna help the handle move back in. So when you look at the uh, ab above image, we almost see this, the widest part of the circle with the handle at this point here, to now get the club head back to straight. And so I'm gonna go with a, a funny analysis here. If you were to look at a truck an articulated lorry. <laughs> I know, where am I going with this? The articulated lorry 
needs to pull out wide to do the bend. So if the, if the lorry wanted to pull itself around that corner, if the butt of the grip, the butt of the grip is the cab and the club head is the end of the trailer, if this is the corner, and let's call that impact, so the club head's gonna try to go from inside to inside, and we see all of these nonsense canes down on the floor with a gazillion canes, absolute nonsense. The club head wants to move inside to inside. This is the lorry, this is the corner. The lorry has to pull the cabin out wide, depending on how wide or how long the lorry is, to swing the trailer back in. So the lorry had to go wide here to get the trailer end out enough to get the trailer to work back in. So when you think about that linkage between the cab and the trailer, it's the same linkage with the arms and the club shaft. There's the cab of the lorry moving out wide, moving out wide, so that when the cab then pulls around the corner, the club head can then swing from in back to straight. Because we don't swing and hold the golf club at the club head end, I can't move the, the handle one for one, or else if I did, this might, only might, have more application. But it doesn't because wherever the handle is, the head's not in the same spot. So what I'm doing with the handle is very different to what I'm doing with the head. So if I don't get the handle out wide enough, I can't hope to get the club head back in to the ball line soon enough. Or else if I swing too much from the inside, you can see how the trailer of the lorry would whack the curb or the obstacle in front of it. And I know that's a bit of a weird analogy, but I hope you can see the linkage effect between the arm and the shaft in how it must work in a downswing. So we go up to the top, we move the handle forwards, and then we move the handle down, which allows it to all line back up and move it around. I hope the visualization from above has given you some clarity on how the handle and the head must move in downswing, through swing, and the other side. And just a point, my channel's growing. 60% of you are not subscribed to the channel that are watching this content. If I've helped you with your goal, how about giving back a little bit of love to me and subscribing while you're here? I'd really appreciate it. I think you'll find that's good coaching and I look forward to seeing you next time.